Koyuki Himekawa has always dreamed of becoming a magical girl. Because of this, she lives vicariously through her character in the viral social networking game called Magical Girl Raising Project. One day while on a bus ride after school, her friends, Sumire and Yoshiko, start talking about the quote-unquote magical girl they've been reading in online articles. The two of them don't think it's true, and since Koyuki is too shy to admit what she actually thinks, she agrees with them. They then come across an aggregator blog dedicated to magical girls, and there, they find several photos showing how these so-called magical girls have been helping people. They even wiped out a triad group. Yoshiko questions why a magical girl would fight a triad group, but Sumire gets excited about the number of witnesses. As for Koyoki, she finally butts in and says that if magical girls really did exist, she thinks that they'd never do something like wipe out a group. After all, magical girls fight for what's right and help those in need. Yoshiko suddenly shows them the ad for the Magic Pro or Magical Girl Raising Project game, and Sumire quickly looks at Koyuki, teasing her that she probably plays that too. And like anyone caught in a situation like this, Koyuki explains that the game is free to play. The artworks are pretty, and it's pretty fun to play once you get around to it, so yeah, she plays it occasionally. Boy, if that isn't a script, I don't know what is. Yoshiko then brings up the rumor that one in every few thousand Magic Pro players gets to become a real magical girl. And she thinks that that and the sightings are just a part of some marketing strategy. When the girls ask Koyuki if she believes in the rumors, she quickly denies this. But as she glances at the window, she suddenly spots a girl jumping from one building to another. Could it be? Well, as soon as Koyuki gets home, she settles on her desk and wonders about what she just saw. Maybe she must have been seeing things because of what they were talking about on the bus. Now, Koyuki's wanted to be a magical girl ever since she was a kid. But with her friends outgrowing it, she had to pretend that she did too. One time, her childhood friend, Sota Kishibe, said she's lucky because she can become a magical girl, since boys like him can only become mages. Plus, when a guy likes that stuff, he gets made fun of. He then lent her an old anime, and with a blush, he told Koyuki that she's the only one he can freely talk to about magical girls. Sota gave her something, which made little Koyuki smile. Still leaning on her desk, Koyuki stares at the magical girl charm on her bag as she reminisces. Sota must have probably forgot all about magical girls by now. That night, Koyuki's playing Magipro, thinking about how she wants to be a magical girl so she can help people when her mom calls her for dinner. But before ending the game, an event pop-up appeared on her screen. The game's mascot character, Fav, tells her she's been chosen to become a real magical girl. Confused, Koyuki wonders if the game has always had flash events like that. But to her surprise, Fav responds to her, saying it's been keeping tabs on her since she started playing the game. It has determined that her behavior, personality, and intellect are suitable for a magical girl. Still dumbfounded by what she just heard, she stares at her screen, where it says to click on it, and Fav asks her if she doesn't want to be one. Become a real magical girl? That would be her dream come true. But hesitantly, Koiki clicks on the screen, and bright starry lights blast, changing her form. A few seconds later, she has fully transformed into her in-game character, Snow White. As a magical girl, her physical abilities become highly enhanced, which she experiences firsthand by accidentally hurling herself to the ceiling in her excitement. Fav then gives her a magical phone, where she can go through the basic tutorial for becoming a magical girl. She can also use it to communicate with the other magical girls, and the girl's surprised to learn that there are 15 other girls like her there. The next day, Koyuki runs away into a hidden street and transforms into Snow White. The girl's on cloud 9 as she jumps from building to building, relishing and finally being the very thing she's always wanted to be. While she's recalling what Fav said about every magical girl having a unique power, she hears a kid crying. She flies to where the kid is and finds a cat stuck on a tree, so she helps the cat down. This is her power, hearing the thoughts of those in trouble. Magical girls are supposed to help people and collect magical candies. These can be earned by helping. Unless she wishes otherwise, the people she interacts with will only retain vague memories of her. Even if they take photos, a magical girl will never appear clearly. This means she can act without worry, and the most she will be is an urban legend. 
everything is clear to Koyuki now, and she spends the rest of her week helping people and enjoying every bit of it. When she finally gets home one night, Fav praises her, saying she has been doing well so far. Suddenly, she asks Fav what the other magical girls are like, and the mascot replies that it's time for her to interact with them in a chat room. Now in the chat room, the girls introduce themselves one by one. Nemurin, Sister Nana, Wei's Winter Prison, La Pucelle, and Cranberry. One of them explains that there were more of them there earlier, but they left when she arrived. La Pucelle tells her that they were just talking about how incredible she is. It's only been a week since she joined, but she already has the top score for the week. Score? What score? Cranberry tells her that she can check it on her magical phone. Sister Nana says she probably still has a lot to learn, so she must let her seniors teach her a few things. Suddenly, La Pucelle proudly says she's the one assigned to train Snow White. Feeling quite overwhelmed, Koyuki sits in her room, typing her replies when she notices the time. It's getting late, and she needs to sleep. She's still a middle schooler after all. After logging out, she sighs happily, thinking how everyone seems so nice. She wonders about the other magical girls as she remembers one girl in the chat room who didn't say anything to her. Then suddenly, she receives a message from La Pucelle, asking to meet her tomorrow night at the tallest steel tower in the city. Despite her nerves, Koyuki meets up with La Pucelle the next night in her Snow White form. After a bit of pleasantries, La Pucelle explains that each of them is assigned to a district. That's why they don't come across one another often. La Pucelle is assigned to the district next to Snow White's, so she thought it would be convenient for her to train her. To kick her training off, La Pucelle takes Snow White somewhere else. La Pucelle explains that being in other districts is fine, as long as they don't interfere with the magical girl's work there. However, the one in charge in the Junin district is Calamity Mary. La Pucelle describes her as a wild outlaw who acts like a western gunman. She warns Snow White to stay away from her. Snow White gets annoyed thinking of the outlaw, saying magical girls should be pure, righteous, and beautiful. This makes La Pucelle laugh, saying that what each considers righteous is up to them to decide. She continues her explanation, pointing to a district where five magical girls are working as a group. In Monzen Town, the group's leader, ruler, is difficult, so Snow White should keep that in mind too. Snow White asks if the group is acting as a team, and La Pucelle nods, saying some magical girls form pairs too. Just then, someone calls them. Top Speed and Ripple are sitting on a broomstick, flying in the sky. Top Speed is highly energetic and friendly, asking how her newbie training is going. Ripple, on the other hand, doesn't even say a word. Top Speed tells Snow White not to mind Ripple since she's just a tsundere. They then zoom away, bidding them adieu. Snow White asks La Pucelle if Top Speed and Ripple are a pair, and the latter explains that Top Speed was Ripple's trainer, leading them to pair up. Snow White thinks about how Top Speed's outfit looks more like a witch than a magical girl, and how Ripple looks like a ninja. Her thoughts are interrupted when La Pucelle asks if she's tired. She quickly denies this, while watching her with a soft gaze, La Pucelle tells her that she's probably the most typical magical girl among all of them. Snow White is flattered by this, and now that she's become the magical girl she's always wanted to be, she wants to be the ideal one. La Pucelle watches her as her face turns red. Snow White notices it, but the other denies it and asks her if she wants to pair up instead. La Pucelle says she decided that when Snow White showed up as a magical girl. Suddenly, La Pucelle says Snow White looks exactly like how she drew her, so she noticed right away. What? She asks if Snow White is Koyuki and says she's actually Sota Kishibe. Yes, her childhood friend, Sotang. Snow White tries to remember, and La Pucelle even explains that they were classmates in elementary school just two years ago. How can she already forget? When it sinks in, Snow White yells in surprise. They spend the rest of the night talking about it, with La Pucelle explaining she's only been a magical girl for a month. They can't believe both of them have truly become magical girls. La Pucelle explains people in his middle school can't find out about his love for magical girls though, because they think he's a perv. So he does his best to hide all of his magical girl merchandise. Snow White tells her that she saw Sota playing soccer since they started studying in different middle schools. So she thought the boy had already forgotten about magical girls. La Pucelle clarifies soccer is fun too, but he still has extra room for magical girls. Snow White is amazed that even boys can turn into magical girls. La Pucelle said that Fav told her that there were a few guys worldwide. So Snow White asks if she's a girl at that moment, and the other explains that when she transforms, she's completely female. 
Lapuzel surprises Snow White when she leans in to ask her again what she thinks of becoming a magical girl pair. Snow White happily agrees and says it would be reassuring to have Lapuzel with her. And so, Lapuzel shows her her power. She stands up and positions her hand on her back, and a huge sword appears. Lapuzel says, I vow upon my blade that I, Magical Knight Lapuzel, shall protect Magical Girl Snow White. That's her power or something like that. Lapuzel says her character is a knight. Snow White giggles at this, repeating that she can rest easy because Lapuzel is by her side if they run into trouble. The other says that there's not much out there that could threaten a Magical Girl anyway. They end the night by shaking their hands, as their magical girl dreams come true. The childhood friends are back in action. The next day, Snow White receives a notification from Vav. They are to gather in the chat room for an important announcement. The sudden announcement is as surprising as the notification. Vav declares that the administration has decided to cut back on magical girls on their region. There are currently 15 magical girls, and another will join next week. So from 16 magical girls, there will only be 8 left. Exactly half of them will be ending their magical girl journey soon. Upon hearing this announcement, the girls gets worried. Isn't cutting them in half quite too much? Fav explains that the mana of magical girls depends upon the land, so there are limited resources in their region to have a lot of magical girls. Even if Nabuka City is big, the mana will drain out easily if there are 16 of them all at the same time. One of them calls out Fav, saying it's the one who kept increasing their number after all. The game mascot just says it was a miscalculation on its part. That's still unfair and ridiculous, not gonna lie. Lapuzel shouts it's still unreasonable to have them, but Fav just apologizes. Someone asks why there's another one to be added soon too, if they'll only be doing this. And Fav just says the contract of the new girl is already formed, so there's no going back. Just then, Calamity Mary asks how they'll be cut in half. That's the question. How? One night, Ripple is on the rooftop, looking through the aggregator blog and finding the triad group's post. She asks Fav if it's true, and the game mascot just says Calamity Mary acts like an outlaw, so it may or may not be real. Fav won't tell her for sure, since nobody likes the tattletale. Ripple then asks about the sightings of Snow White. Fav says the magical girl has been working the hardest, so the sightings are just the tip of the iceberg. Fav says it's good to see the others as rivals. Competing with everyone is supposedly a good thing. But Ripple is just annoyed. She says Fav set it up so that they'd be competing with each other, whether they like it or not. The game mascot denies it, saying it's a baseless accusation and that they created fair rules to decide how to have the magical girls. Suddenly, Ripple hears a rustling sound, so she flies down below. But to her surprise, Top Speed appears before her. The witch-like magical girl teases her, saying her tsundere game is as strong as ever. Ripple fires back, saying she would have run away had she noticed Top Speed sooner. Top Speed just laughs at this, saying that they're a team, so they should get along. Ripple says she doesn't remember agreeing to be a team. Top Speed didn't answer. Instead, she asks Fav about the new rule. The one who gets the least magical candies at the end of each week will drop out one by one, since there will be 16 of them starting next week. Top Speed complains, saying she can't believe she'll have to go through it for 8 weeks. Fav tells her that if she wants to stay a magical girl, she should do many good deeds and collect magical candies. They really should get serious about it then. Top Speed hops on her broomstick, telling Ripple to ride already. As they call it a night, Top Speed asks Ripple how many she earned for the day. The magical girl answers 40, and that's pretty good. Top Speed happily says that they need to do their best, so they don't get dropped out, but Ripple just calls her annoying. Top Speed calls her a Tsundere again and reminisces about when she got seriously worried for Ripple. The other girl asks when it was, and Top Speed says when she gave her her first lecture. The first time Ripple met Top Speed was an unforgettable night. She was annoyed by the outfit she was given and at having a senior. When Top Speed arrived, she energetically introduced herself, and Ripple noticed that the girl's outfit looked more ridiculous than hers. Top Speed found her gloomy hour funny for a magical girl and called her a Sundere for the first time after refusing to ride with her broomstick. She asked Ripple what her powers are, as she explained that hers is having super speed when she rides Rabbit Swallow, her broomstick. Before Ripple could answer what her power is, someone in the dark calls out to them. The girl slowly walked forward. It was Calamity Mary, asking about Ripple. She thought she'll be the one to teach the new recruit, so Top Speed stepped forward explaining that she had been asking Fa for a while to let her teach when a new person was assigned to the district next to hers. 
She said she never had any idea that Calamity Mary was supposedly next in line and apologized. Suddenly, Calamity Mary fired her gun, and Ripple quickly blocked it with her sword. She warned Ripple, saying her gunshot should be an obvious sign not to oppose or cause trouble for her. Calamity Mary loaded her gun again and pointed it at Ripple. Top speed quickly went between them, telling her to hold it off and promising that she would give Ripple a long earful. Top Speed tried to tell Calamity Mary to settle it peacefully, saying that they're all magical girls after all. Calamity Mary smirked at this, pretending to agree and turning her back. But as Top Speed excitedly faced Ripple, Calamity Mary tried to shoot her again. Thankfully, Ripple quickly pushed her away, and they successfully dodged the attack. Calamity Mary instantly disappeared. Ripple said if someone picks a fight, then she's fighting back. Top Speed warned Ripple to understand her opponent first, because Calamity Mary is a bad one to mess with. Then she noticed that Ripple's arms are bleeding. They looked at it for a while, but Top Speed subtly said that the wound would heal when she transformed back to her real self, so she'll be alright. So magical girls can get hurt too, Ripple thinks. Top Speed warned her to be careful. She may be okay with normal humans, but with fellow magical girls, it seems she could end up dead in the worst case scenario. Ripple wondered if it had happened before, but Top Speed just called her stupid, saying it would have been a big deal if it had. She said it's just something that Fav had mentioned to them before. Suddenly, Ripple threw her weapons. You see, her shuriken are guaranteed to hit when thrown. That's her power. Back to the present, Top Speed tells Ripple that that was the time she decided to pair up. She said it felt like she had to stick with Ripple, since it seemed like danger would follow her everywhere. Ripple nonchalantly tells her that she never asked for it. And Top Speed just said that she's like a naked, unsheathed blade, exactly how she used to be long ago. Suddenly, Top Speed remembers she needs to get home fast, and Ripple says she's surprised that she has a curfew. Top Speed just smiles and asks if she wants to be dropped off. Ripple declines, saying just on a rooftop is fine. Top Speed bids her goodbye and flies home as soon as Ripple gets down. When Ripple arrives in her room, she checks her phone and reads some messages from her mom, asking how she is. She quickly deletes them. That same night in another part of the city, Snow White and La Pucelle save an old couple trapped inside a burning house. La Pucelle uses her sword to break through the roof, and they bring the couple outside. Unable to show themselves to people, they call out for help before leaving the couple in a safe place. The two of them stay at the tower where they first met. Snow White wonders if the people they rescued are safe. La Pucelle says it looks like it since they earned 413 magical candies. If the people they rescued aren't safe, they won't receive that many. Then La Pucelle calls out Snow White. She asks how Snow White not to call her Sochan, but she accidentally called her that earlier. Snow White apologizes, saying she was just caught up in the moment. Blushing, La Pucelle changes the topic and says Snow White is leading so far in the earning of candies. She's even active when she's alone, so no one can keep up. La Pucelle is grateful because she won't be in last place, thanks to Snow White's enthusiasm. Snow White says instead of wanting to earn candies, she's just really thankful to be a magical girl as she can do what she loves, helping people. As La Pucelle thanks her, Snow White says it's nothing, and she's glad to have Sochan with her, I mean, La Pucelle. When Koyuki gets home, she enters the magical girl's chat room and finds only one girl. She chats with Nemorin and talks about her day. Nemorin praises her, saying if the other girls were there, they would have applauded her too. It's quite late. That's why Nemorin is the only one online because her power is entering people's dreams. She explains that she usually sleeps in the afternoon and rarely goes outside, so she can always stay in the chat. She's like the lord of that domain, as she puts it. Koiki notices the time and tells Nemorin goodnight, as she still needs to sleep. She lays in bed and thinks about how Nemorin is such a nice girl, a bit whimsical, but nice. Later, Nemorin enters a little boy's dream. She rescues him from a huge dinosaur, destroying the city turning it into a small lizard using her Nemonin beam. When the lizard drops in front of the little boy, Nemonin politely tells it that she has removed the evil from his heart so it can turn into its tropical island. She flies away right after, leaving the little boy amused as he watches her in the sky. After her mission, Nemonin checks her magical candies. She has earned quite a lot, and Fav tells her it's because she's been saving Earth and space. However, Fav says that candies earned in dreams only apply in dreams too, which means most of Nemorin's collected candies are not valid. She still needs to put in a lot of work in real life. Working in real life is exhausting though. Nemorin can just leave that to the other magical girls, right? In the House of Rulers team, 
she checks how many candies her teammates have gotten. The twin angels Minel and Yunel get reprimanded when they report they already earned 28. Yeah, just 28 for both of them. Next is Swim Swim. She has earned 101. Ruler boasts that she has earned 124 herself. That's the leader for you, I guess. The twin cheer her on, but Ruler just tells them to shut up. Ruler notices Tama looking shy in the corner and asks her how much she has earned. The girl can't answer, and Ruler asks if she hasn't earned a single candy for the day. Tama just apologizes, saying she really tried but to no avail. That's just a lame excuse, according to Ruler. She announces that she won't let anyone from her team drop out. Swim Swim walks out, earning a look from her team. Minail and Yunail ask her if she's going home already, but she pays them no attention. The twins chatter about Snow White, most likely being at the top again since she's so amazing. She even has her own aggregator blog. Ruler sighs, annoyed as she checks her phone. On the tower, Snow White talks to Lapuselle about Nemrin. Lapuselle says that there are many people like her, always hanging out in the chat room and ready to listen. Snow White thinks about what Nemrin is like in person. She hopes to meet and chat with her in real life someday. Suddenly, Snow White remembers it's almost time to announce the results. They'll have to bid goodbye to whoever drops out. Lapuselle sadly nods, saying that that will happen to half of them. So they just gotta try doing their best to make sure they're not dropouts. Fav announces the top magical girl for the week in the chat room. And to no surprise, it's Snow White again. Some girls congratulate her and cheer her on, but Ruler whispers to herself, calling her an eyesore. Soon after, Fav announces the magical girl with the fewest candies earned, Nemurin. Snow White gets surprised as Sister Nana and Winter Prison bid farewell to the magical girl. She asks if Lapuselle had known it all along, and the latter answers she didn't know as much. But she saw it coming. Ruler and the twins cheese Nemurin, saying it was obvious as the girl was always just hanging in the chat room. Snow White runs up to Nemurin. They've only been talking for a while, but it has been fun for both sides. Nemurin says she'll be watching out for Snow White on the aggregator site. As soon as they shake hands, Fav tells her goodbye, and Nemurin instantly disappears. A pop on their screen appears saying, Nemurin has been deleted, which surprises Snow White and Lapuselle. Out of the chat room, in real life, Nemurin stares at her glitching magical phone. She sighs, thinking about how she can't transform now. Fav suddenly appears, telling her she still can. Her right to be a magical girl is effective until midnight, so she still has a few minutes left. Nemurin happily transforms for the last time, thinking about how perfect it is as she plans to end being a neat soon anyway. She chooses what dream to enter and ends up in a little girl's dream. She flies down next to her and asks what she's watching. The little girl answers, saying she's waiting for the princess as she wants to be a liege. However, Nemurin asks her if she wants to be a princess instead of just a liege. The little girl looks at her curiously, and Nemurin tells her she sure can be one because every girl is capable of being a princess. She pats the little girl's head with a smile, and soon enough, Fav tells her that time is up. Time to bid farewell to everything. When Nemurin's mom enters her room, she asks how late she will stay up since Nemu has an interview the next day. Her mom gets no response, so she thinks her daughter has already fallen asleep and accidentally left the lights on. She goes near her daughter, telling her she'll catch a cold if she doesn't fix her blanket. The magical phone lays on the floor, glitching, and slowly disappears as Nemurin's mom realizes she's gone. You ever heard of a monkey's paw? It's basically something that makes a wish come true in the worst way possible. Koiki dreams of being a magical girl, and she got exactly what she wanted under such sordid conditions. After all, nobody ever gets handed their dreams without paying a price. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.